Hi, welcome back to Exjaw Junction. And uh, sorry to have been such a gap since the last one. Things have been a bit hectic, various things. And of course, now we're all under lockdown and having to stay home and our entire lives have been turned upside down. But we're making the best of it and I'm sure you are. The video today we've got, uh, well first of all we're looking at the, the installation of the Daypole signals, the, the bracket signals, and show you the ups and downs of those. A uh, quick look at a new, a new loco we've, uh, we've bought. We've done some work around the line and uh, the line's having to be tested and uh, we'll run an inspection train round just to make sure everything's fine. And also some of you may know that um, we both build models of locomotives, showcase models, to two and a half inch gauge out of cardboard and paper and have been doing for many years various exhibitions including uh, the, the Hornby Open Day and close to where we live here is one of the public schools, St Lawrence and of course the Southern Railway named one of their school class locomotives after the, the the school and in the entrance of the school they actually have one of the nameplates from the engine so I thought well wouldn't it be nice if we presented them with uh, a showcase model of the loco to go with it so you'll see how we spent part of a day at St Lawrence and uh, we were welcomed by the the, the the pupils and the teachers and uh, we handed over the engine I think you'll find it interesting. Anyway, enough of me. Let's move on and I'll see you at the end. In our last video, we were talking about Daypole's uh, new signals. And don't get me wrong, I think they're fantastic. Uh, the the modelling in them, the detail is wonderful. But my main gripes with it is one, there's the base for the signal. And that is the main power wire you know there's all 12 inches of it don't ask for me in uh, metric because i won't give it to you i'm old-fashioned anyway that's the main power wire and you are expected unless you buy their extension cables to operate the signal using that now the extension cables for this are um, I believe two meters long and they're not cheap so if like us the first signal we put in is quite some distance from the control panel that is not going to get us very far so what we've done the old saying make to amend we went down to uh, Wilkinson's and purchased some of their cheap power cable I mean it's a very small price per meter. A few meters of that will do nicely to join up with that for the main power cable for it. Run that back to the power supply, no problem. And I had left over from a, 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 an old project some ribbon cable. And you get this in the quite wide strips, but you can split it down to how many core you want and we've got six there and that will do for this we will just make sure we keep a note of the colors on the the terminals for instance brown and there happens to be there's a, gra a, a brownie gray there so that will do nicely and we will just extend it and for for next to nothing uh, I seem to remember we got these from, uh, you can get them from your local electronic shop. I think we got these from all components, probably up at Alley Pally or somewhere. Um, the stuff comes in, you know, yards of it and it's very cheap. And that's, that's got to be the way to do it. So what we're going to do now is to actually show you us putting this, this all in and connecting it up. And then you can watch as we test it and then uh, you can see how we get on um, warts and all whether it works whether it doesn't work we'll leave nothing out okay let's get on with it it's 
start off with in the instructions it actually says you can run it from the track uh, DCC bus wire or a voltage of uh, 9 to 12 volts uh, DC so what we've done we picked up um, a transformer uh, quite cheap at an exhibition and uh, we're just uh, wiring that up now and we're going to solder it up have that for, uh, for the main power supply and uh, 12 volts for the signal so we'll see how we get on right well he's just run the power cable around he's attaching the uh, the two switches underneath and uh, you see busy working away under the bench there and uh, in a moment we'll, we'll put the power on and see what happens apparently you have to adjust them using the adjusters underneath um, to get the uh, the arms level etc so uh, We'll see how it progresses. Well, we put the power on and the lamps have come on. They're both uh, signals at red. Now, if he operates the switch, he's got the two little short leads plugged in. That one's okay. Switch the other way. That's fine. Put them both back, and the other one. They've even got a slight bounce when they return to danger, which is very nice. Uh, try that again. Okay, he's going to try them again. There it goes. Yep, and the other one. Beautiful. And back to danger. And the other one. Very nice. I'll tell you what, for the money. Yeah, yeah, a little bit pricey, but I'll tell you what, you get your money's worth. And they're about right. Oh, yep, they're about right. And all we need now is about another dozen. <laughs> okay, he's running the, uh, the ribbon cable along under the bench there. Uh, it will be covered up afterwards with, uh, we've got a nice green curtain goes along. But uh, that'll be going across to the signal. We've taken each of the switch leads and we've cut them in half. And then they will be joined to the corresponding colours, each end of the ribbon cable. And uh, that'll do nicely, that saves uh, having to get any extension leads and uh, solder those on with a bit of heat shrink and hopefully they will work okay we'll soon find out okay so we've installed the switches on the panel for the signal one for the uh, the through road and one for the the loop um, storage loop off of the through road just there and uh, if uh, Nigel operates the, the Main line, see the, the main through road signal first. As you can see that's come off. It's got the uh, lovely light behind it, it's got the back line behind that. Return to danger. Nice little bounce. And now the uh, the other signal for the loop. There you go. And return to danger. The panel will eventually uh, be labelled with a proper little diagram for it. But I think you'll agree with me, that's very nice. Just before Christmas we couldn't resist the bargain from uh, Patterns. They were doing the Helgen uh, 0102 Tango with the hundred pound off, and uh, there she is. Beautiful model. Some people have criticised it online. Um, if, in my opinion, for a lot of it, picky little things. 
uh, such as the handrails not being blackened and uh, one or two little things like that but I think we're getting far too fussy now yes we're paying a lot of money for an engine but the standards of our models now are far in excess of anything that we had a number of years ago so uh, I think you know for the money we're not doing too badly and that's a beautiful model well done Halgen I think you've done well Good morning. This is St Lawrence College. St Lawrence College is one of the great colleges of this country along with Harrow, Eton, Shrewsbury, Canterbury and all the other public schools. And of course many years ago the Southern Railway named a fleet of its locomotives after public schools. So you had the schools class. And today we are going into the college uh, because I've constructed a model of the locomotive St Lawrence in two and a half inch gauge and it's being presented to the college today. I'm here to uh, attend the, the unveiling of it and uh, hopefully get a, a look at the nameplate. They've got the nameplate for the locomotive hanging up in the school. So I uh, hope they've given it a polish. So, uh, right, okay, let's go. Right, well, as you know, you attend one of the most famous schools in the country. We're all very proud to have some large college in the area. And going way back before the war, my father was actually a master here. So I've always had an interest. And I, I used to drive trains uh, out of Ramsgate to London. That was my job, I was a train driver. And a long time ago, I suddenly found that I could build models of railway engines out of paper. That is just paper. Paper and cardboard. That's all. And if you, you sort of treat it correctly, you can, you can make it any shape you want. And I thought to myself, well, wouldn't it be nice? I knew that St. Lawrence College had the nameplate for the engine, because the Southern Railway and the British Railways going each school to the nameplate. But I thought, well, wouldn't it be nice to give the college a model of a logo? Everywhere else has a little hornby one. I thought, well, no, it's a, a famous school that's got to have a decent size one. <laughs> So I built that, and it is just paper. What sort of modelling is Hope you enjoyed that. Um, there was a lot more of the St Lawrence film. There was a lot of questions and answers from the, the children there. So they're fantastic kids, and very interested. And uh, what we're going to do, if you would like to see it, we're going to put the, the whole full length version as a standalone film on YouTube on our site. And uh, those of you who are interested, you can have a look at that. Well, that just about does it for another glorious episode. Um, I'd just like to say that um, in these times, um, first of all, a big thank you to all those who are putting their lives on the line for us. All the essential staff, uh, you know who you are. Big thank you to all of you. And... The rest of us have to sit tight, stay indoors, let this thing die out and so we can hopefully get back to our normal lives, back to things we enjoy, the model railway exhibitions, the steam railways, family life, holidays and everything we love. So take care, keep safe, stay indoors. <laughs>